Hi again everyone. So I've been experimenting with yet another wacky sound synthesis technique that you might call Povros for polygon vertex rotation synthesis. Actually I'm pretty sure you could come up with a better name for it but I had to use something. It's a form of graphic sound synthesis, the broad category of systems which translate images to sound. And I put this app together to experiment with it called Rotosound. The Ogre 3D engine provides bindings to many programming languages, including Pure Basic, which is what I mainly use for my synthesis apps. So with the Pure Basic 3D commands, I first coded up various polygon shapes, allowing control over the X, Y, and Z axes of rotation, and the overall size of the polygon. Here's a simple tetrahedron, a shape with just four vertices, the vertices being the corners of the polygon. This one's a hexagonal prism, but these sliders here allow some control over the shape so we can turn it into a notched sheet, for example, or something like the pointer of a compass. There we go, just for a bit of shape variety. And this last one is the most complex shape of all. It has 14 vertices, is asymmetrical and irregular. I just call it plain fish as it kind of looks like a cross between the two. When we first create these 3D models, they have their own model coordinate system, which maps to another coordinate system called world coordinates, which define the position of these objects relative to all other objects in the space. But for Povros, what we want to do is to have the motion of the vertices trace out a waveform, basically a set of amplitude versus time values, which we then sonify. The idea being that as the object moves in space, so do its vertices, which then changes the shape of the waveform derived from the position of the vertices, and we should hear both the audio and visual changes in lockstep with each other. There's various ways one could go about achieving this, but for Rotosound, my approach has been, first, convert the world coordinates of each of the vertices to screen XY pixel coordinates. Next, create a wavetable with a number of equally spaced breakpoints based on the number of vertices. For example, if the number of vertices is n, then the number of breakpoints is n times 2 plus 2. So for a tetrahedron with four vertices, our wavetable would have 10 breakpoints. The first and last breakpoints are anchor points with an amplitude of 0. So we can seamlessly transition from one wave shape to the next without clicks or audible discontinuities. Then we set the amplitude of all the other breakpoints to a scaled value between minus 1 and 1, from the X and Y screen coordinates of each of the vertices. So the amplitude of every pair of breakpoints is the scaled X coordinate followed by the scaled Y coordinate of a vertex. And in this way, we use both coordinate values. To play the waveform, we interpolate between each of the breakpoints, incrementing at a rate based on the frequency at which we'd like to hear the waveform. For the interpolation method, I elected to use cosine interpolation as it's a very quick and easy way to create a smooth curve between the breakpoints, avoiding the sharp angles of linear interpolation, which generate harsh sounding high frequency partials. When we get to the end of the waveform, we update the wavetable with the new vertex amplitudes, then read through and play back the wavetable again from start to finish, and so on. The slider here sets the base frequency. Ticking this frequency checkbox makes the base frequency dependent upon the position of one of the vertices of the object, in other words, to the amplitude of one of the breakpoints. Ticking this pulse checkbox results in a small frequency increment getting added to the base frequency at every increment of rotation and then getting reset after a few increments of rotation. Here's a compilation of Rotosound in action. I've got the frequency checkbox ticked in all of these.
Hopefully that's enough of a background to help you get the most from this app and if you're so inclined to further develop this Povros technique. Like I said, my implementation is just one way of driving a waveform from the vertices and like always, I make the source of my application freely available.